Hello, Jeffrey Martin here, director of the Center for the Study of Non-Symbolic Consciousness and a research professor and director at the Transformative Technology Lab at Sophia University in Palo Alto, California, the very heart of Silicon Valley, where we, where we research how seekers can become finders and how finders can become explorers so that everybody, including you, can live your most powerful and just maximally potential life. All right, I get a lot of questions from people who are terrified of transitioning to non-duality, enlightenment, persistent mystical states, etc. If you don't know, we call these persistent non-symbolic experience, or PNSE. It's our academic term. We spent 10 years getting to the absolute core of this experience. And so I think we all owe a huge debt of gratitude to all of the religions and spiritual systems and psychologies and stuff that have carried these things through humanity up to this point, but they've all kind of added their own little things onto it that aren't really that necessary. And so for 10 years, our project has basically been trying to strip those away and get to the absolute core. And we've been very successful at that. In fact, in recent years, we've been successful at transitioning people. We have a protocol, a research protocol that helps literally 73% of people in our research transition to ongoing and persistent forms of non-symbolic experience in between one week and four months. Right? So we've been through the whole cycle. We've collected the data, we've analyzed the data, and then we've put our data to the test to see if we can get people there. And we've been researching for the last several years people before, during, and after their transition to this. So as you might imagine, as a function of that, a lot of people that come in and think about participating and using our protocol, which we call the finder's course protocol, kind of are like, well, you know, I've been watching some videos online and people that talk about this kind of stuff, they tend to talk about it like it kills you. <laughs> like, like who you are has to go away. And they have all these scary stories about how they slept on a park bench for two years or whatever. And they're like, you know, I've got a family. I've got a job. I've got responsibilities. I look after one of my parents, maybe. I can't afford to have that happen to me. And so they're terrified of making this transition. So a couple of things about this. First of all, our research has dealt with literally thousands of people. And only the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest percentage have had anything like that in their experience of the transition to persistent non-symbolic experience. So what you're hearing is the exception. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well then how come the exception has such a megaphone? Those types of powerful experiences often lead people to a life change that really goes in the direction of advocating persistent non-symbolic experience. I mean, even with those impacts on their life, it's not like those people were out there saying, gotta stay away from this. Whatever you do, don't go anywhere near this stuff, right? Quite the opposite. They're out there trying to talk you into coming in to the fold, trying to talk you in to joining them in persistent non-symbolic experience, right? So even the people that have the harshest, most difficult transition experiences around this, which are a fraction of a percent in our experience, they still are like, listen, it's totally worth it. You gotta get over it. <laughs> so keep that in mind for starters. Now, the second thing to keep in mind is that the reality is that the vast majority of people, and I mean 99.99, who knows how many decimal points we'd have to carry that out for, have an incredible experience in terms of their transition. Uh, to, to ongoing and persistent forms of non-symbolic experience. The, in all likelihood, you're going to be one of them. Now, I have one caveat for you around this, and there's, there's one type of person who should not even think about going in this direction. If you have some sort of very serious psychiatric, psychological condition, you should very seriously think twice before you pursue the transition to ongoing or persistent non-symbolic experience. The reason for that is that you are not coming from a stable place right now, right? If you're thinking to yourself right now, let's see, I could slip my wrist or I could keep listening. I ah, slip my wrist, keep listening, slip my wrist, keep listening. Oh, I just can't decide, right? That's a sign that you should not keep listening. <laughs> That's a sign that you should put this PNSE stuff aside until you have sought professional help and really gotten yourself to a stable psychological place where you can start to maybe tiptoe back into it. Now, I don't mean... You know, somebody's like, 
I've had such a hard life, and I've just been so down in the dumps for years, right? There's a big difference between I've had a hard life and I'm down in the dumps, and I've got a razor blade at my wrist right now, and I'm thinking of ending it all. So if you're just depressed, if you've been depressed for a long time, I don't mean you. I mean, you know, if you have serious bipolar swings, if you're schizophrenic, if you're suicidal for, for whatever reason, um, do not think for a second about heading in the direction of persistent non-symbolic experience. You've got to get professional help. You've got to get yourself stabilized. You've got to be stable for quite a while before you even think about this again. Now, I suspect that that's not you. I suspect that I'm not talking to a person who is going through that uh, type of intense psychological situation. And so if it's not you, then good news. You're probably not going to be the one who writes the book about sleeping on the park bench for two years. Right? If you think about the people who've done that and you really look into their histories, people who did have a really tough, massive transition, they were often psychologically unstable in some way, including you know, suicidal and stuff, before that transition occurred. You're a normal person. You're stable psychologically. Even if you're a little down in the dumps, who cares? You're stable psychologically. You don't have anything to worry about in terms of this transition. And even if something did happen, even if somehow you became the first person to ever contact me and say, you know, I watched that video and oh, I just had a terrible experience. OK, well, first of all, it'll be nice to meet you. Uh, I'll look forward to adding you into our research population. Second, there's a whole lot of help that you can get because you were stable just before this happened to you, and it's probably going to be pretty, pretty easy to get you stable again. But also, you have a tremendous advantage because you can always pull yourself out of it. See, most people think that persistent forms of non-symbolic experience are permanent, but they're not. We call them persistent. We don't call them permanent. And the reason we call them persistent is because we know they're not permanent. Right? So if you do go through some crazy thing and you find yourself in the middle of it, guess what? You can get out of it. You can pull yourself right back into normal consciousness. Now, most people are trying really hard to make sure they don't go back into normal consciousness, right? So you don't read a lot of books that are how-to manuals on how to get back into normal consciousness or a lot of stories out there about, and so anyway, then I found this way to get back to my normal suffering and back into my depression and oh, it was so great, right? Why do you think you don't read those? <laughs> because even if the transition is tough, people are still like, this is a billion times better than where I was before. So you need to just set these fears aside. And as long as you're normal and stable and doing, you know, and doing well, you basically should have no problem with your transition to ongoing or persistent non-symbolic experience. So you don't have to worry about that fear of, oh, I'm going to lose my job and sleep under a bridge. Oh, my spouse will leave me. You know, oh, 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 whatever. Not going to happen. We deal with thousands of people all over the world in our research, holding down normal jobs, have a wide range of families from annoying to awesome, <laughs> right? Um, everybody from people who are, you know, leading large multinational companies all the way on down to people who are basically sleeping on their kid's couch. So you name it, we have it in our research sample. Whatever your life is like, I am just 99.99999% sure that you're going to find that it's supported by a transition to persistent non-symbolic experience and that your new experience of the world will be absolutely phenomenal and you won't regret it for one moment.